In January, we brought you the story out of Texas about a 17-year-old girl named Zephaniah Trevino who was accused of an aggravated robbery turned murder in 2019. She is one of three teens charged with capital murder in the case, but Trevino claims that she is innocent because she was being sex trafficked by one of the other suspects, a 19-year-old by the name of Philip Baldenegro. In the wake of her arrest, celebrities like Kim Kardashian West, Selena Gomez, and Demi Lovato have publicly thrown their support behind her. Jamie Lee Curtis even took out a full page ad in the Dallas Morning News calling Trevino an innocent bystander. But defense attorneys for the two young men say the allegation of sex trafficking is a lie and that no piece of evidence points to her being innocent or forced into anything against her will. For the first time in the case, they have released that evidence to News Nation correspondent Marky Martin, and she joins us now tonight in Dallas with the story. At the beginning of the year, I sat down with Zephaniah's mother and family attorney. I also sat down with the attorney for Philip Baldenegro. Since our story aired, Zephaniah has been certified by the court to be tried as an adult in the case, which is partly how I'm able to bring you this evidence tonight. And also tonight, for the first time, we're hearing from the defense attorney for the third suspect, who Zephaniah has not named as a trafficker, but the attorney says her claims are so egregious he had to speak out. My name is James Lee Bright, and I represent Jesse Martinez, one of the three co-defendants in the capital murder case. In his first sit-down interview, Dallas attorney James Lee Bright opens up about the case and the evidence that before this week has not seen the light of day. You are the first outside person of this whole case to see it. Your client is not being accused of sex trafficking. So what do you get out of this by coming forward with I evidence? Don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. She's not naming him directly, but it's not possible that the accusation wouldn't carry over to him, too. And it's a blatant lie. According to all three legal teams, in August of 2019, Zephaniah, Philip, and Jesse lured two men over to an apartment complex just outside Dallas with the motive of robbing them of drugs and money over text messages. Zephaniah pretended to be an underage girl with whom the grown men would have sex. When they arrived, Philip and Jesse attacked and held them at gunpoint. Here's part of our January interview with Zephaniah's mother and attorney describing how it all ended. They didn't follow them out into the parking lot. They savagely beat them again. And Mr. Baldenegro ended up murdering one of the pedophiles over there to purchase this young child. Crystal Trevino says her daughter was involved, but not guilty, claiming Philip forced her to comply. Sex trafficked her, threatened her, also arguing that at 16, Zephaniah was too young to make her own choices. I'm sad that she had to go through this alone and couldn't speak up. She didn't know she had a voice. She didn't. And when we asked Mrs. Trevino to paint a picture of who her daughter is, this was her response. Loves to laugh, loves to have fun, athletic. Her church loves to worship. But attorneys for the young men say the evidence taken from Zephaniah's cell phone doesn't show an innocent girl without a voice. These videos taken from her Snapchat. Well, I'm gonna talk my sh regardless. I don't give a f if you a cop. I'm gonna talk my sh all y'all ain't ain't all y'all ain't which is why none of y'all getting cuffed by me. Facts. In January, one month before Zephaniah received adult certification, we also sat down with Philip's attorney, David Finn. At the time, he couldn't show us, but said the evidence on her phone was damning. In her phone, she's looking for guns all the time. For months, searching Glock, Glock, starter pistol, Glock, 38 pages of it. <laughs> These videos, also taken from her social media accounts, posing with firearms, smoking weed, and offering low prices for various drugs. This one, holding a palm full of white pills, says tap in, crackheads. Bright and Finn said the case was garnering so much attention, so much support for Zephaniah in the court of public opinion, that they filed for the Michael Morton Act, which would allow them to disclose the evidence. A judge granted it, and they believe their motion was a first in Texas history. And they've done interviews with everybody, People Magazine, Dr. Phil, 
They've doctored this little girl up to look like a saint, when now I can show you the evidence and you know she's not. On her public Instagram account, by the handle Free Zephy, the family has shared her time under house arrest, cooking family dinner, singing in church choir, taking online high school courses. I hope. In this post, she's FaceTiming with actress Jamie Lee Curtis, who has backed her. You'll let me know what we can do as we move forward to follow it up to bring more pressure Pressure breaks pipes. Let's yes, go. thank Come you for on. everything. Pressure, break. no, Pressure breaks pipes, no. pedal to the metal. Yeah. Let's go. Another piece of evidence released to News Nation this handwritten letter from jail that Zephaniah mailed to her best friend. In one line, she says this I wish I could rewind and change stuff. I used to think I was untouchable, that I'd never get caught. Sheesh, man, was I wrong? She goes on to ask the friend for a favor to disable her Instagram account, writing, quote, Feds trying to hack my stuff. Zephaniah gives her her password. That same friend, who we're keeping anonymous, was interrogated by the DA. We now have those audio files. When asked what she thought about the sex trafficking allegations, this was her response. What the hell is wrong with them? I didn't even believe that story. Someone was forcing her to do anything. Nope. That Philip had ever threatened her with a gun to do anything. Mm -hmm. The friend says Zephaniah had robbed people for drugs before, and that she and Philip were in a consensual relationship. In the audio, she says Zephaniah's mom actually liked him, thought he was a good guy. Her family tells a different story. The Trevinos and my client have always maintained that she was not in a boyfriend girlfriend relationship. We have evidence that shows great abuse from this man against his child. Uh, we have great evidence to show that she's tried to get away from this man. Zephaniah's team has yet to release any evidence and has not responded to our requests for a follow-up interview. Bright says they haven't because evidence in her favor doesn't exist, claiming the celebrities, the support of strangers from afar, and all the jurors in the court of public opinion have been had. We don't ever want to believe that somebody's pushing a false narrative. Humans do that, though. And they do it when it benefits them. In her case, it benefits her in terms of her defensive theory. It won't ultimately work. And in their case, you can get online and see how much money they've raised for this. Now on her fundraising page, that number is north of $100,000. But Bright and Finn tell me that behind the scenes, it's upwards of half a million. And they say they're curious as to where that money is going, especially since Zephaniah's latest post on Instagram is selling free Zephy sweatshirts and T-shirts. The family saying that money will be going to the defense fund and also her commissary account. Also worth mentioning, too, we have reached out to the PR firm that represents Zephaniah and also scheduled our original interview. We reached out three times with no response, and I have reached out to her attorney twice with no response either. Reporting in Dallas tonight, Marky Martin, News Nation. And now an update. Marky did receive a statement late tonight from the Trevino family attorney. This is coming in just before the beginning of our newscast and reads in part, we are disappointed yet not shocked about Zephy's recent adult certification. The state of Texas simply does not have the legislation in place to protect sex trafficking victims who are charged with the crimes of their traffickers. The Dallas District Attorney's treatment of this case has been alarming. Over recent months, his office has shown to have an unethical relationship with Zephy's traffickers attorney and has endeavored to sponsor theories of victim blaming to justify his prosecution of a child sex trafficking victim. We are encouraged by Zephy's bravery to fight for herself and other sex trafficking victims facing the same battle she is faced with, and we look forward to her day in court.